Hello, I'm Drew Sheldrick, Media Manager here at the United States Study Centre at the University of Sydney. Today, I'm joined by two former participants of the Centre's Washington DC Placement Program, part of our Study Abroad initiative, which offers students a chance to gain practical experience and a better understanding of the United States. Sharan Kethasurin and Jenny Shu are both studying Commerce and Law degrees and joined the Washington DC Placement Program in 2019. Sharan, Jenny, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Sharan, if I can start with you, um, you spent nine weeks uh, working, living and uh, studying in DC. DC this year as part of the program. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to uh, apply for this opportunity? Yeah, I think um, I'm very much involved in politics back here on a state level. Um, I thought the chance to go and participate in Congress overseas was something I really couldn't pass up. Um, I think the educational opportunities as well were quite good, Um, being taught by People who worked at CNN, worked at the Post and things like that was just something you couldn't get back here. Um, And I thought also in terms of mapping out my degree, um, I think this was, you know, commerce law is quite a structured degree. It's quite a strict degree. um, And this was perhaps one of the only opportunities to expand outside of that and use some of the elective space that the University of Sydney provides you um, to sort of follow your passions and still make sure that it counts back to some degree and that you're doing back here. And Jenny, how about you? So like Sharan, I'm also really interested in policy work and did some policy experiences here in Sydney. Um, So having the experience to do this on an international scale, especially in the hub of like political, what's happening um, day and day in America, it's definitely an experience I couldn't pass up as well. And the University of Sydney is known for like the really good IPP program. Mm -hmm. And so of all of them, definitely this one is the one that most aligned with what I wanted to do in the future. Jenny, you're uh, interested in sort of the social justice and youth advocacy elements of your degree. Did this program give you the opportunity to explore those particular interests at all? Definitely. Um, So for me personally, uh, when I was working at um, the office of Jim Costa, California 16th. Um, I'm very passionate about health and especially our aging society. And I got to write um, my own recommendation in regards to that aspect. Oh, wow. Um, and you definitely uh, be working in Congress, you get to meet a lot of different groups and non for profits. And that was definitely something that was very good in catering that side of my interests. Fantastic. Uh, Sharan, you interned at uh, Republican Cros- Congressman Paul Cook's office during your time in DC. How was that experience? I think. Incredible. I think there were a couple of things that sort of contributed to that. I think the first thing was um, being in the midst of a, of a shutdown was quite oh, interesting. Right. Yeah, of course, the government uh, shut down in January. Exactly, yeah. And I think, you know, when you're on the sides of the phone and you're talking to constituents in California and you're hearing their issues and things like that during a very heated time, um, that was something that I would never get back here. Um, I think I also had the perhaps a blessing in disguise that my, um, my office was quite understaffed at the time. Right. So we had... Um, sort of personnel issues with people moving back to the district and things like that. Um, and in that regard, I had a bit more of an elevated responsibility. So one of my passions has always been defense. Um, mm-hmm. I worked with Australian Army cadets back here for four years as well. So that was a passion that I could take up um, and work with the military aides in my office. Um, and that was something that was absolutely incredible to do as well. Um, my office actually had a bit of an Australian influence as well. So one of the staff there was Australian. Um, a lot of the constituents and some of uh, Lockheed Martin, for example, um, they had an Australian sort of presence in the office as well. So it was quite an interesting office. And I think it was interesting being on a, first a, a Republican side, but also a small office side um, compared to the experiences of those perhaps in the Senate. And a California Republican too, which seems exactly. to be a bit of a rare breed, right? It really was. And I think, <laughs> um, you know, definitely a blue state but yep. when we branch out a bit west to so sort of some of the more rural areas. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was very interesting. California 8 is an interesting district. You get that cross-section of the people who have moved from the coast of California who have come in who are, you know, categorically Democratic voters. And you Congress, not Congress them, but you crisscross them um, with the individuals who have forever and ever been Republicans. Um, and just hearing the passion of the voices in that state, um, in that district in particular, I think was quite a meaningful way to experience that on the side of the phones. And Jenny, you mentioned you worked at uh, Democrat Jim Costa's office. How did you find your time there? It was definitely interesting as well because like, Congressman Jim Costa is a blue dog Democrat, yeah. so definitely not what we uh, like conceptualise as like a typical Democratic values. Right. Um, I would definitely echo what Sharon said, hearing what people on the ground in California felt about issues such as um, gun violence and, for example, the shutdown at the time was some, an experience that I could not imagine being here in Australia at that time. Um, and definitely connecting with people on an emotional level intimately, um, being that front 
of face of the office when people call in, when people will write letters with real concerns and real stories is something that I can not recommend more and having that experience. Well, did uh, any of the constituents that, that uh, phoned in find it strange that there was someone with an Australian accent oh, on the yeah, other end of the line? definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and what, what, what did you say? Did you sort of, well, oh, I'm just sort of here sort of interning at the yeah. moment? You know, okay, yeah, right. They loved it though. Yeah. Oh, did we, they? Yeah. Okay. I had both experiences. I, I had at the start. I mean, interestingly, by the end, I wasn't being picked up on it that much. All right, um, okay. I don't know if I should go back there for another six months, see what happens. Um, <laughs> picked but, up on American accent yeah. pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it was interesting. I think uh, perhaps this is a distinctly democratic thing, but I know that Republican officers, um, they tended to get a bit defensive at, the, at first and then afterwards sort of thought, oh, wait a second. Um, this is a person supporting my congressman. And yeah. they were very happy to be on board with that. And Australia and America have such a great relationship that I think most Americans were more than happy to have an Australian intern in the office. You mentioned uh, there were Australians in your particular office, but mm. did you guys get a sense that there was an awareness or understanding of the US-Australia relationship um, sort of overall in Congress during your time there? I mean, many of the, the sort of people you come in contact with sort of understand the sort of the history of that alliance? To an extent, I would say, um, I think that my, especially from my office, there were people from the district. So it was definitely stronger values and like an understanding of what's happening in the district and especially the issues day in day in America. But it's also really fun to like sort of make cross references to what's happening in Australia and make those um, connections with people in the office. Yeah, sure. I sort of walked in perhaps being a bit you know, worried at first that we were going to be the only Australians in Congress. Yeah. But I was pleasantly surprised by that. I yeah. mean, I remember walking to lunch um, one day and then I think the day before we had had a, a session with Maurice Payne um, oh, right. and okay. some of the some of the constituents and the politicians were there. Um, and this student from Monash University came up to me and started talking to me. And then I realized that there were all these other universities doing the exact same thing. Yep. So, you know, automatically you create a connection and there really are a lot of Australians in there. Um, I went to another policy meeting as well um, and I... I remember it was a five-person panel and there were four Americans and there was one accent and I could pick the accent immediately. <laughs> it was an Australian accent. Yeah, and I yeah. thought for a moment, okay, I'm going to have a chat to this guy afterwards. Um, yeah. And he was an economist. He had come here five years ago um, from Perth um, and he had settled in. I grabbed a beer of him, had a chat. Um, and there really is an Australian presence in America and especially in Washington. Jenny, how did you find the studying component of the, the program? Did that sort of complement that intern experience well? There were some aspects, yes and no. So the two subjects that I did there, one mm-hmm. of them was learning about the Supreme Court okay. um, and the second one was about museums and monuments. Okay. Um, and so there was not the most overlap, but then that it was, gave a fresh new experience um, in terms of what I learned in class. Okay. Um, and I think that being in DC, my museums and monuments was def- um, class was definitely such an interesting class. Um, being in all, all the Smithsonian museums and going in there and all the art galleries um, in the capital of, the, of America is a really interesting subject to look at, um, c- question how it's been curated and whose stories it really reflects. In terms of the Supreme Court unit, that was really interesting in learning like the backgrounds of each of the Supreme Court judges going in and watching them um, talk about one of the cases. It was definitely such an amazing experience. And so in, in terms of even though there weren't a lot of overlaps, it gave me a lot of new insights to look into. And how about you, Sharon? What about the dorm experience? How was, how was that sort of university, American university experience for you? Well, I had perhaps the pleasure or perhaps a regrettable pleasure of living with Jenny um, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the better half of two months. I think it's something that you cannot replicate mm-hmm. back here. I mean, it really is, you know, it, I think it's a completely different culture. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you live on a dormitory here, you live at college here. Yeah. Um, it's not expected. It's not the standard thing to do. Whereas in America, it is the standard thing to do. Um, and for us Australians to get used to that dormitory life whilst the rest of the University of California students were like, oh, cool, cool. it's just another dormitory experience. Mm-hmm. Um, that was incredible. And I think the friendships and the bonding that you make are unbelievable. You know, when you're at university, you're spending perhaps two, three, maybe four hours maximum with your students um, in class. And when you're living with those people, you create some unforgettable memories. You really know them on a deeper level. Um, and I think I've made some of my closest friends by living with them, going through the tough times and the really great times <laughs> with them. Yeah. Um, and there are some bonds that you really can't break. Mm-hmm. And you enjoyed the, the dorm experience as well? Yeah, definitely. There was some fights. I was so <laughs> oh, right. really? okay. But then it, 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 makes you, it builds you to have a, the, like the strongest bonds, truly. And yeah. um, even here, we all our roommates in our room are definitely still in contact and we still love each other and talk to each other. And it's just, it, like... Living together in in another country is something that you can. It's like an ex, truly unique experience, and some and a friendship 
inevitably grows from there. Um, and I could not have asked for better roommates as well. Yeah. yeah fantastic. Um, was, there, was there anything that you would recommend someone thinking about doing uh, this particular program, maybe that, you know, that you wish you knew before you sort of applied or dive in and any particular tips that you'd like to pass on? I mean, I think the first thing I'd say is make sure the program's for you. Yep. Um, I think it is such a well-renowned program across the university. It's very easy to just sort of you know, see everyone else doing it and you want to do it as well. Um, but I think really dive into it and look at the opportunities that are there. And if there's something that isn't there, um, talk to the university, talk to the University of Sydney, like the United States Study Centre, um, see if they're happy to open up placements and things like that as well. I think there's always is that opportunity. Um, so, I mean, if you're interested, absolutely apply. You know, you, you can't be in it if you don't you know, you want to win it, that sort of thing. Um, and then if you do get in, make the most of it. I mean, I can't remember a single day where there was not something new happening or not something different happening, um, whether it was Monday to Thursdays working or whether it was the weekend trips that we made really make the most of it because it is an unforgettable summer. Um, you know, you, you give up the sunny Bondi beaches, but <laughs> that you, you get a lot in return. Yep. Um, and to come back and have people say, oh, Sharon, you're a different person now. You know, yep. that's just something you cannot get anywhere. That's great. For me, my tip would be know your why in terms of why you would want to do this program and be confident in it because I think I was questioning a lot, like, am I ready for this? This is quite an intimidating and a big intensive program. Yeah, sure. And for me, I had a lot of like self-doubts and I was like, I'm really passionate about policy work and social justice, um, but am I ready to go like all the way across the other side of the world and do this in a, and work in, in Congress? Like, this is quite a big opportunity and because it's a big opportunity, you can't say no. And so I definitely feel like you should make sure the program is for you and also believe in yourself and going for it. Jenny and Sharon, thank you very much for joining us today and thank sharing you. your experiences. Thank, thank you for you having us. us. If you'd like to know more about our Washington DC placement program or any of the study abroad activities, you can find further details on our website, ussc.edu.au.